welcome to episode 213 of Fiber Town. It's the last day of February in 2018, and I hope my camera's okay. It just did a weird lag. Hey, welcome to my kitchen. I have a lot to show you and share with you today. Not a ton, actually. I don't know why I said a lot, but yeah, let me show you what I've been making. Um, actually, let me start with an Ask Fiber Town question because I have neglected to respond. Yes. Um, okay, this is from Daisy Flower 7 and she says, Hi Emily, I'm wondering what your favorite online yarn websites to buy from. What are your favorite online website, yarn website? Should I just start all over? Okay, where do you like to buy yarn online? Thanks Anissa for sending in that question and I don't buy yarn online a lot anymore. That's maybe not entirely true, but that's what I think in my head. Um, I did just buy some yarn for Knit Camp and I got some Malabrigo worsted for that. And I bought from Webs. And I've always had good experiences buying from Webs, America's yarn store, yarn.com. They have a good selection, the shipping is reliable, customer service is, is good, never had any problems. I've been there in person and you know, it's a family run place and um, a respectable place, I think. And I like buying yarn from, from them when I need to. Um, <coughs> I would say these days, my number one, you're probably not surprised, my number one online yarn purchasing happens at the Wooly Thistle, which does the international shipping, so I don't have to. So that's her tagline. Um, and that's Claire of New Hampshire Knits, and she just has her finger on the pulse of what I want these days. Um, and probably, definitely five years ago, it wasn't stuff that I really would lusted after. But now it is. And um, she has great publications. She has great notions. Um, and the yarn, the yarn is just has started to open up a whole new world of um, sheep breeds and sort of typical yarns from other countries, especially the UK and Scandinavia. Uh, yeah. So thanks for the question. If you guys have other places you like to buy yarn online, comment in the thread. I'd love to hear. So yes, let me show you what I finished this week. I have a pair of socks. These took me a week to make, which is pretty fast for me because my attention span for socks is not super great. But every time I knit a Zauber Ball Crazy, which is what this is, I just can't put them down. It's a two-ply sock yarn, which does concern me. It's a German brand, um, and the two plies gradiate. So occasionally the colors will match up and you'll get a solid, but in general, it's just a mass of marling, and it's just so much fun to make. And now I'm gonna put these on and wear them because I've shown them to you all. I love them. This is the Mallerwinkle colorway, which I believe means Painter's Corner, or it might be a neighborhood in some German city. I don't know for sure. Oh, hello. There's a little doggy down here scratching at me. She might come up and say hi. Can you make it yourself? You need a boost? Oh my gosh, it's so big. Hello, everybody. It's been a while since you've seen my Alice girl. There she is. She is the goodest girl that you will ever meet bar none. Yes, she is. The beloved of many. You're a cute potato. So yeah, um, that's my one FO this week, but I have plenty of whips. So let me put this Mrs. down and I'll show you. Um, okay, so I have, what shall I show you first? I think I will show you my Carbeth sweater. Well, I do have a weaving FO, I just realized. <laughs> Let me show you that instead. And then I'll show you my Carbeth sweater. This is a warp I put on the loom for, um, for knit camp because occasionally somebody gets bored of knitting and needs to do something else. This year nobody was bored of knitting, so nobody touched the warp that I put on the loom. I have a 32 inch Ashford rigid heddle and I had this very ancient yarn, as you can see I haven't tied the knots yet, for the fringe. Um, this was Collage Cornastic. Is that a blast from your past too? I bought this at a yarn store that closed down 
almost 10 years ago. And I actually crocheted it into a sweater from the Happy Hooker book when back when I was a crocheter and not a knitter. It was kind of a lacy t-shirt. And it's made out of corn, corn fibers. And I ripped that top out eventually and um, balled the yarn up and it sat on a shelf for years and years. And I thought, let me let me try warping with a plant-based yarn. Could be interesting. I, I have only really woven with wool. And I know that, you know, most people don't weave with wool. Weavers in general, they tend to use cotton, linen, things of that nature. Um, so this warp did a few things. It shed dye powder everywhere. I don't know if that's because it was old um, and it had been sweating in a bag for years or what, but it shed dye powder all over the loom on my pants as I was weaving. Uh, but it was, I just went with it anyway because I was using scrap yarn as, as weft as well. I'll show you what, I, what the weft looks like. It wove up super fast. I did some striping. I did some clasped weft. I like these sort of grays, creams, and purples um, together, sometimes with some browns thrown in there as well. Stripes, more stripes more clasped weft. I have to focus on saying that correctly. And then some stripes to finish. So this will get fringed up, washed, and it'll be added to the pile of strange weavings that covers my piano. So it's going to be house decoration. Yeah, so I'm going to throw away the rest of the corn yarn. I have enough for, you know, the same amount of weaving and I just don't want it anymore. So I think it's, it's um, maybe I won't throw it away so much as recycle it into another sort of mattress blanket project that I'll make eventually. I'm saving all of my scraps, including, including thread ends that I've been snipping off of sewing projects. So I've been going sort of deep into the um, conservation of materials around here because every little bit can go into a stuffed blanket like that. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, go back a few episodes and look at my... Um, the blanket that I stuffed and sewed. Yeah, so that is the end of my FOs. Now I will show you my Carbeth. This is a Kate Davis pattern. I do believe you say Davis, and it, even though it's written like Davies. Um, I think the um, names with the IES ending in, um, in Scotland and England, I think that's how you pronounce them. At least in Scotland you do, I'm pretty sure. Davis. Yes, the Carbeth sweater. And you might notice I have a little raised seam right here. It starts right here, and that's where I started alternating hand spun. Oh, sorry about that. Oh my gosh, I did it again. So this is a three-ply Coopworth fleece spin of mine. So fleece to sweater, uh, which is always a fun thing for me to do. And um, and it's a bottom-up knit. This is the pullover version, as you can see. Um, yeah, so my first skein was up to here, and then I said, oh, it's the hand spun. It's a little bit like using um, hand-dyed yarn in that every skein is slightly different. There's thick spots, there are thin spots, and so it really does help to alternate skeins. So I started doing that. I should have done it earlier. Um, but I've been trapping the previous rose yarn behind the first skein on... I've been trapping one of the yarns and it makes this raised kind of ridge. Um, I feel like when you're alternating skeins and you don't do that, you get a different kind of gap and I'd rather have this faux seam look. Um, I think I'm going to try to go back and sort of see if I can replicate that for these few inches down here to the ribbing maybe by running a stitch behind those stitches. We'll see. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm not too precious about my knitting and that sort of thing, details. Um, really kind of loving the color actually now. Um, it's got a very heathered look and you can see the unevenness of the hand spun. Um, but I think it's just, it adds texture and it's really great. So it's kind of an Aran weight. I'm knitting the third, third size in, so the third smallest size, 
and um, I have a slightly smaller gauge than what it's called for. So I feel like I could have gotten away with the second smallest size, but my gauge is sort of leaning towards making the a size up, basically. So I'm really digging the um, garments with extra ease in them. So lately, that's a thing that I like. So I am just trucking along. I have 11 inches. I want to knit until at least 21 inches before I do the the armholes. Um, this yarn does have quite a bit of lanolin in it still. And when I swatched, it was quite remarkable how the swatches changed with the washing. I actually threw them in the bathtub with me. So, um, yeah, they took a bath with me and um, they just softened and bloomed afterwards, slightly like me after a nice hot bath on a cold winter's day. Um, it's just getting really creepy, isn't it? Sorry, a little too intimate. But I'm excited to see how this behaves when I finally wash it. Um, and I actually, it's give, it gives a bit of extra drag uh, in the knitting, all this extra lanolin in the yarn. So I'm using my slickest needles and they are chow goo. Are these interchangeables? No, these are fixed circulars. Chogu Red Lace, the best needles out there. And uh, yeah, I can just sit here and knit and chat with you guys. Yes, indeed. I should show you my mitered square blanket, though. Um, I have added a few things to that, so. I'm gonna put down my car bed. It's a great sweater. And I'm tempted to knit the, the cardigan version that she's just come out with. But I wanted to show you a few squares I put on this out of the wool that I spun that was given to me by Patricia P. Fortune from Knitography. And it was the Norwegian Pelsau and why can't I remember this? I said it in a different episode. The two Norwegian um, breeds. The spell, spell, spell sow? And Pelsa, oh my gosh. My memory's like a sieve for these words for some reason. I don't know why. So yeah, they here they are. They knit up gorgeously. I have three squares. There's that one right there. This is a combined com combination of a couple colors, as is this one right here. And then this one is the Tunis, um, which is a fleece spin that I'm working on right now, and I'm actually just finished <clears throat> applying uh, maybe six six more ounces of the singles, so. Yeah, it's coming along. That's all I've got going for spinning, but um, yeah, I have added, I added maybe 23 squares to this blanket over Advent, and then a couple of them over Knit Camp, maybe three or three and a half. I really do need to go back and finish that Tunis square. Oh yeah, that was a hand spun. I think that was spindle spun gourmet stash that I put on recently. So just, it's inching towards halfway done, this blanket. And it's been at least three years on the needles. And who knows how many more it will be on the needles. That's all right, I'm fine with that. Now, I do, oh, and I showed you my weaving, I showed you my socks. Let me show you my songbird mitts. I'm doing the New Hampshire Knits um, mitten along, so her colorwork mitten along. And I'm doing the songbird mitts by Erica Heuser, Heiser, not sure how you say her name. I have the cuff of one completed already. And the yarn I'm using is really delightful. It's Isle Yarn from the Woolly Thistle. I actually would love to just go on her website soon and, I don't know, like spend $1,000 on all the yarns I want. That's not gonna happen, but if you ever do like fantasy yarn shopping, I, I maybe I'll just go on her site and do that. That'll be fun. So this is yarn from Purbeck, the Isle of Purbeck in Dorset. This is the Green Close colorway. Um, and then this one is Stone Hips. 
I'm using US 1 needles, which is really unusual for me, but the gauge in this pattern calls for 10 stitches per inch. This is fingering weight. I think I said that. And uh, that's a very small gauge. My socks are typically eight stitches per inch. So this is an incredibly um, dense and warm fabric. I love the yarn. It's super enjoyable to have in my hands. The stitch definition is amazing. It, I think like each color stands alone, yet they fill in and get that fuzzy melding that's so pleasant in color work, um, stranded color work. So the cuff, which I've just finished, is sort of, it's reminiscent of a cage, bars of a cage, and then the palm has a songbird on it, and, sorry, not the palm, the back of your hand. The palm has um, a decorative sort of um, repeat, like a filigree look. I don't know why I'm showing you my blank palm, but yes, that's what you will see later when I finish knitting it. Um, I think it's going to be a lovely fit. Cuff seems like it's going to really stay on nicely. I really hope my people aren't home from school. I'm hearing car doors. I do have the windows open. Um, so yeah, songbird mitts, really fun. I think I'm going to sit down put on a show tonight and knit a bunch on those. Let me show you what I've been sewing. Oh, I will show you what's going next on my loom. My Icelandic is going on the loom soon. I'm going to ball it all up and I am going to weave yardage. And this is Icelandic it smells really good now. It was stinky when it was in the fleece form. I think it was a kind of a pungent ram fleece. And um, yeah, I got it at New York Sheep and Wool in 2016. Processed it, spun it, dyed it with marigolds, and then I over dyed it once more with goldenrod from the fields uh, on my daily route. Um, collected this past summer. So I am going to weave yellow, heathery, Icelandic yardage. And it's going to be kind of spectacular, and I'm going to felt it, or at least full it, and then sew something from it. Oh, and I can't forget to show you what I've sewn. I'm wearing a couple things that I'm wearing are handmade by me. I'm all over the place all of a sudden. Um, let's bring it in. So what I have been sewing, I'm going to show you this first before I forget. This is an apron with pockets. Made this out of a home decorator's, oh look, birds. Now I'm going to just sort of stand on my chair because I, I am so proud of the, look these are pockets, but look how I matched up the fabric you guys. Are you impressed, especially with this one right here? Look at that. That is pretty impressive, like this guy. And this guy, too. But yeah, this, this apron, it's a little half apron, which I adore because I hate having the around the neck thing that sort of drags on your neck and you get a neck ache and you sort of hunch over. Half aprons, they're where it's at. I was at a restaurant a few weeks ago and I was watching the waitstaff and their aprons and I thought they looked very smart and I wanted one. So I had this fabric in my stash and I used, let me see if I can tell you the blog that I used. Uh, I used their tutorial, just basically their measurements. It's from Kerbley. Do you see that? Kerbley. Make this the half hour half apron. Yeah, it's got nice ties in the back. And I pop this on and I get into like a housework tidying do all the detail work, frame of mind. And as I move from room to room, I can put put these socks back in the pockets. I need to take these to my bedroom because I finished darning everything. There's that one. I actually sat down one day this week and I did the darning. This is my North Ronaldsy sock, which is a magical sock, but it is, yeah, it needed some darning. And I am 
Once the socks are blown through and they're beyond repair, I will put them in blankets. I'm saving everything now and it's lovely. Oh my gosh, so what else have I sewn? I've sewn two linden tees, my just the best pattern. And this one hasn't been pressed. The seams are a little weird still. Like this looks a little weird. But I used scraps for the sleeves. Um, I made a toaster sweater out of this wonderful cozy fabric. And I have noticed that there's a fault in the fabric here. I think I'll need to do a little decorative embroidery there. But this cozy mattress, not mattress, everything's mattress today. What's up with that? It's quilted. It's a lovely quilted jersey. I banged out two of these. Here's the other one. Um, this one, I had enough for this one here. And then the front and back. It's a reversible fabric, you can see. Um, now this looks pretty bad, but it really is, all my seams are sort of tacked down with the overcast foot, see that? So I did a stretch stitch and then I locked down these seam edges with my overcast foot because this quilted stuff, it's reversible and it's got like a, a very subtle stuffing um, between the little diamonds, so it does peek out when you cut it. So I made two super cozy lindens. I love this pattern. It's a Green Line Studio pattern. I've made at least seven of them. My first ones were pretty bad. Um, it was before I'd ever heard of matching stripes. It was before I didn't know that you shouldn't stretch out jersey fabric as you were sewing it. Um, although you do have to sometimes stretch things. Um, like if you're sewing on the ribbon, you do sometimes have to stretch the ribbing to fit but you don't want to stretch this fabric. So my early ones are quite wobbly and warbly, but that's all right. So that's what's been going on for sewing. I have a few acquisitions to show you and then we'll say goodbye because my hair is losing its integrity today. It's starting to frizz up. I think we're gonna get rain. So I count my viewers as my friends and I have several in those viewers that I've met in person and have become in real life friends. And one of them, Lori, who is Intuit Knit, she lives in Canada, near Toronto, I think. Is that right, Lori? Um, she sent me a package. Unexpected and just lovely stuff. And I'm gonna actually take this out of the plastic so I don't get a glare. But this, there were many lovely things in it, but I thought I'd share this before I give it a spot in my craft room. And this, I believe, raises, this is a print of the sheep in the snow. Look at that. I believe this print raises funds for the community where one of her sons lives. Um, and just, it's just so evocative. I mean, I love that they've, got fencing in the picture because if you have livestock, it seems like 40% of your life is it revolves around fencing. Am I right about that? It's just my impression. I don't have livestock except for Alice. And she's more of a bestie than a livestock. So yeah, I, I adore this print and this will go in my craft room. Thank you so much, Lori. What else do I have to show you? Ooh, I got these. I paid $5 for these at Looped, which is my LYS of choice. You asked about my favorite online yarn stores. Looped in Washington, D.C. and DuPont Circle is my LYS that I prefer. And they had these, which I really love for clipping um, threads on my sewing makes. I don't know what company makes them. Oh, I also have this. I forgot to show you. Um, this is a color guide for color work knitting. Typically, I knit with my dominant color in my left hand and my contrast color in my right hand when I do color stranded knitting. Fair Isle with two colors. <sighs> my Birkin sweater, a lot of it has three colors in a row. So I thought I would try this, which I saw on Paper Tiger podcast by Diana Walla. And let me tell you, that lady has her stuff together. Um, 
really informative, intelligent videos she's putting out there on YouTube. I think I like it. I didn't think I'd like it at first, and I tried to knit Continental with it, but I'm just at heart really more of an English knitter. Uh, I can do Continental. I mean, I could do it a lot. I just, I just prefer English. So I, this is promising for me, and I'm watching you people who are knitting big Birkins, big yokes, I'm watching you to see if it works for you before I rip mine out. And if I do end up knitting it again, I'll use this probably. I don't, but Instagram is terrible. I might miss your big Birkin yokes, so please ping me when you complete them and tell me what you think because I need to know. And like, I thought I was following people on Instagram that I'm not following and people have disappeared and I see things like two weeks later. It's pretty terrible. But it's still the best thing out there, I think. What else can I show you? I have some linen. Started thinking about um, summer makes. And I do like buying linen from fabric-store.com. I think they have, they have mostly linen. That's what they specialize in. And uh, I've used some of their linen before and really like it. I got this, I got three yards of this. I might make a linen lander pant out of it or some culottes for summer or some sort of dress. I think this would be amazing to embroider on. I think it's the stone colorway. Uh, yeah, it was on sale. And so was this. Now this is, I only got two yards of this, I think. It's a little peachier than I thought it would be. Looks quite nice, um, but I think something pink and summery would be amazing. I don't know what it, what it will be. Um, maybe this will be the Bondi dress by Tasudi Fabrics. I, I haven't decided yet if I really want to show that much arm in the summer. Woman of a certain age, you start thinking about upper arms in particular. But you know what? I've never really let sort of body image stuff stop me from doing much of anything, so I'll probably make it anyway. But it's yes, it's got a very it's got like a is it a halter neck? I don't even See now, I'm doing scenarios where I have back tattoos and I'm wearing this dress and it's awesome. I don't have any tattoos, but maybe I'll get one for, for wearing the dress. Oh my gosh, on that note, I think I better say goodbye. No, okay, I'm just gonna stop myself. Hope you all are well, and until next time, take care.